I'm having a growth problem. That's not how long I knit this foot. It's, I promise, it's really not. Here's how long I knit a foot on a sock. <laughs> I, I've got, I, I, it's grown by a couple of centimeters. I mean, that's, that's insane, right? What is going on? I have in my hands two very, very, very different sock yarns. Very different. So I want to talk about them. You know I want to talk about them. This one is the Knit Pro Symphony Terra, the new, new-ish, I guess it's been about a year now, line of sock yarn from the maker of possibly some of their favorite needles. If you are of that persuasion, it is a lovely multicolored dyed yarn that works up, well, at least the other one worked up, which looked very similar in the skein, and it worked up like this, because this is also Symphony Terra. So, sort of a multicolor situation, speckly, tonally, this one obviously in a more purple and blue kind of a hue. And here's your tag for reference. And this is very much a superwash yarn, which, I actually really like, and I'm not a huge fan of Superwash. If you've been around for a while, you know that it's not my favorite thing. But I really do like this. Why? I don't really know. It is very tightly plied. It is very tightly spun. It's wearing beautifully. These socks have gotten an awful lot of wear. It's been about a year, and I wear hand-knit socks every day, and these are one of my favorite pair. So these have gotten a lot of use, and there obviously is some. Oh, I was showing you a hair, sorry about that. My hair gets everywhere, what am I gonna do? Some wear on the foot. It is a little bit felty, which is confusing, because it's, I don't pick. I always wanna pull these off, and it's a bad idea, don't do it. That's how I end up with holes. That's what gleaners are for. Anyway. It holds up beautifully. I'm really happy about it as a yarn, which is why I ordered it in another colorway. Because I, I just, I want another pair of socks, a plain vanilla, funky colored socks. So I, I like this. It's a nice super wash. It's pretty typical, but something about it is just slightly more pleasant than the usual marshmallowy super wash that you get. This yarn, on the other hand, is an easy wash and it's also obviously very different you can see it is probably very tightly spun but not as tightly plied you can see the plies as opposed to this where you absolutely cannot you have to look very closely to see the plies on this on this it visually it reminds me so much of Kelbourne Woolen Scout that it's like a little weird this is the colorway Fair Hill. I can't remember what the colorway on the symphony is. Hang on, I can tell you. I forgot to tell you. It doesn't tell me. Strangers in the Night. This is Strangers in the Night. This is Fair Hill, and this is the Fiber Company's Amble. Now this, in fairness, is also different in, a, in fiber content, as well as, like, everything else. It is 70% wool, 20% alpaca, 10% nylon. So it is like, I can't even tell you how soft this is. This is so ridiculously soft. And I'm going to be knitting it at an exceedingly tight gauge. So I'm imagining, I, oh, I can't wait to feel this fabric. I really, I can't, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I got to film so I can cast on because I really want to feel this. I highly doubt the multicoloredness of this is going to come out on camera. If I can get a better picture, I will and put it up on screen instead of me holding this and hoping, although I do have the scary light on, so maybe. But what's also interesting about this is that it's easy wash. And I'm going to pull the label out for a second because that's, it's got it on the label.
and it doesn't actually say what kind of easy wash, so I don't know why I did this. Yeah, it doesn't say what what easy wash means beyond that it's a, a, a sustainable version of superwash. Now, there's a whole bunch of different ways that that can happen. Most of them are are in fact sustainable, which is nice. Uh, and I trust, I like and trust the fiber company. They tend to be very transparent. Of course, I can always be wrong, but I'm okay with them as a company from everything that I've seen. So I don't know specifically what easy care process this is, whether it's the ion thing. I love the ion thing. I haven't stopped thinking about it since I learned about it. I really love the idea of like electrostatically charging things so that <laughs> it doesn't felt. I don't know if that's what's going on here. It does not specify. All it does specify is that it's not the chlorine process. Is that... Why, why do I talk before... I just read this. It's something about that. Yeah, it's not the chlorine processed washable wool situation. And it's recycled nylon, for what that's worth. I, I don't know if that really makes much of a difference, but it is... Recycle, recycled nylon for the plastic portion of the equation. Um, but what, so, you know, in my mind, everybody knows this is soft. This is silky soft. The silky as opposed to dry, right? That's, I'm, I'm inventing my new, like, scales as I go. <laughs> we'll see if it becomes useful. But to me, merino, superwash merino, is a silky softness, or can be a silky softness. It can also veer into marshmallowy softness, but this is the silky softness version. Um, earth yarns, similar in feel, and oh, what's the one? What's that other one? It's another Irish company that I've completely forgotten the name of. That is a similar feel. I'll put it on the screen if I can find it, because I don't even know if I have the label anymore. That's one of those sock yarns that, you know when you wait to find the right pattern and then like like a decade goes by? It's one of those situations. I love the yarn so much. I know it's called Olive Leaf. And I love the yarn so, so, so very much. Uncom no, no, I'm not gonna guess. It'll be on the screen from before. But I love it so much that I keep like procrastinating putting it into a pattern because I really want to showcase the tonality of it and I haven't figured out how to do that yet. It, it uh, Maybe I have and I'm too lazy because the Poet Socks by Sari Nordland would be very, probably I think really, really good. But the idea of working lace socks is, well, I get, they're not that bad in terms of lace. It's mostly just increases and decreases on this particular pattern, I think. So anyway, shockingly, I'm being rambly. I, I, this is so soft. It is still silky, but you know, I mean, you know, if you felt alpaca, you know the feel of alpaca. If you did not know what this fiber blend was, you might be able to guess that there is a bit of alpaca in here. It has that hand feel. Just a bit appropriate to the amount that's in here, but it is giving it that particular alpaca-y type of softness, but it does not have the guard hairs that alpaca tends to. I mean, you can see it is a little bit hairy, but very, very, very minor hairiness. Mostly merino is not hairy. You get that little bit of a halo, but not the hairiness. So we'll see in the final product whether it will be friendly for those with sensitivity issues, but uh, right out of the skein, I did like... I really want to knit with this. Um, price point wise, $23 I paid for this from Woolen Company. And I'm going to just give a shout out to Woolen Company because I love them. They're lovely human beings. Their price points are solid. They're not cheaper. They're not insanely cheap, but they're on the low end of the spectrum. I've seen this for more than $23. They also have free shipping at every price point. So you buy one skey of yarn, they're gonna ship it to you for free because they're that nice. And they also have free winding. And because they no longer use paper to package your yarn, because you don't need to, it's what's gonna happen. Um, it's, it's not going to come apart in the mail, it's, knock on wood. Now that I've said that, that's probably going to happen. But anyway, um, they now, instead of using paper to wrap your purchase, they donate 25 cents to the World Wildlife Fund. 
I mean, like, come on, that's really nice. That's really cool. The Symphony comes in at the $17 price point still. When I bought the first skein last year uh, at another, at a different local yarn shop that was local to me, I paid $17. I've paid $17 here. So, yeah. I'm really excited to, to, to knit with both of these. I'm excited to own the finished pair of these. Knitting with it is fine, but it's not anything in particular. I'm really excited to own uh, these socks. I really want these socks on my feet, like yesterday. So I kind of wish I didn't have a pair of socks on the needles, and they're probably going to get dropped. Because that's a thing that happens around here. I'm having a sock problem. And I've never heard of this happening before, which doesn't actually mean anything because there's a lot of stuff I've never heard of before, but I would have thought that if this were a thing, it would be talked about. I'm having a growth problem. Now, in fairness, I'm sorry, this is just so ridiculous. In fairness, I don't actually know what this yarn is. I bought a sweater at a thrift store. The label simply said 80% wool. It did not specify what kind of wool it is. I don't think it's alpaca. It doesn't feel like alpaca. It doesn't in any other way behave like alpaca. But, but, I, I mean, that's, that's not how long I knit this foot. It's, I promise, it's really not. Here's how long. I need a foot on a sock. <laughs> I, I've got, I, I, it's grown by a couple of centimeters. I mean, that's, that's insane, right? What is going on? I honestly don't know. It's, it, that's like three centimeters of growth. And it's both socks. And no, I don't stretch them out. There is there is no reason this should be happening. Um, now, I sometimes get this on a ribbed sock on the second wear, because I sometimes, especially the non-superwash wools, I definitely get two to three wears out of them. Superwash wools I tend to wash more frequently, because although the Terra, no, I'm not. I'm doing two wears on this, too. But... Some of my socks I can get a couple of wears out of. These, I think I got a couple of wears out of them and then I washed them and then I, and so I've, I've washed these six times, maybe five times. They, they've been washed a couple of times. I don't stretch my socks when I do this. I do, well, I sort of, I give it a this, right? To sort of get that out. And then I give it a this because I get shrinkage here or it gets, even though for the first one to two wears, it stays like this, there comes a point where things start to go wider and shorter on my, my, on my everything. It happened with the vest that I made at Loft, with Loft, uh, Brooklyn Tweed Loft, where it has slowly gotten, as I wear it, and, and it's not got negative ease, there's ease. So it's not like it's tight and I'm pushing it out. Although I suppose moving, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I'm kind of mystified as to what's going on here. But I have lost a little bit of length and gained a little bit of width. And so it, I have to then, you know, block it again. Which, and I don't block it in, I block it in terms of I, I lay it down, right? I'm not pinning it, I'm not aggressively blocking it. So that's a little bit weird. Woolen spun yarns sometimes do that on me. I'm not that surprised when it happens. But this is like, this is crazy town. This is, something is going on here. And I don't know what it is. It does seem to happen more on my ribbed socks. It never happens on these. It never happens on a pair of vanilla socks, or it hasn't yet. And I have a bunch of pairs of vanilla socks. I have a bunch of pairs of ribbed socks. Rib socks are more likely to, to get wider and shorter on me. But this is insane. 
Does anyone have any idea what the heck is going on? I don't even know what to search for to solve this. <laughs> My socks are growing? No, that's, that's not going to get me things. That's going to get me blocking things, which is not what's going on here. So I think this is one of those funny things in the... I mean, the internet world is wonderful, right? Like, we, we learn a lot from YouTube. We learn a lot from a lot of places. I also read a, a fair number of knitting books. Not an egregious number of knitting books, but I read a fair number of knitting books. Never have I heard of anything like this happening. Which, again, doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. It could be one of those things that people think is just them. Because if you don't hear about it, you're like, oh, well, maybe that's just me being weird. Right? Maybe that's maybe I didn't knit it at a good gauge, or maybe the yarn is just misbehaving, or maybe, 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 or may, I mean, we don't actually talk a lot about durability. I mean, we do. I do. I try, and I think I want to start to try more because I think it's something we should probably talk about more. That as you wear garments, things happen, and we all know about pilling. Pilling is a thing we have to deal with. Um, Minor changes in gauge is a thing we have to deal with. I think the more we talk about it, the more we get the sort of collective, oh yeah, that happens to me too, or I've, this, I've noticed this and this and this, and the more information we have about that, the closer we're going to be able to come to figuring out what's actually going on. Or there's a smart person somewhere who knows exactly what's going on, and then we can just tell everybody. <laughs> That would work too. So if you have any idea why socks that I knit to this size have suddenly become this size, please let me know in the comments. I would love to figure this out. So I'm revisiting a project that I started last end of last summer and messed up in a pretty big way and am now revisiting. This is the beginnings, well, or what's left of, a Valona tank. I have no idea what the designer's name is because I completely forgot to write it down, so it'll be on the screen as we speak. I have knit this before. I knit it for a friend of mine, and I really liked the fit. I really liked the sort of tea back situation. It is, I believe, a free pattern. I'm like 85% sure it's a free pattern. Yeah, no, it's a free, it's a free pattern. Uh, it needs a little bit of adjustment, which is unsurprising, especially with tank tops. Like tank tops are like, you know, you, you want to get the fit that you want to get, right? With a tank top, especially because you either care about where your bra is or you don't care about where your bra is, but if you do care, then you have to deal with that. So different things have different fits. The thing I like about this is that it is sort of a high, it sits about here, right? So as long as I increase quickly, I can get a nice shape in the front and not have too much, you know, length going on down here. It's, it comes to a T in the back and then increases out to join and then you have, you know, a, an A-line tank, I think this one is, which I am undecided about. So what I had done last year, and I thought I was being so clever because I had knit it before, and when you've knit a pattern before, you, you kind of start to get ideas of what you might do differently. So I thought I was being reasonably clever because what I did was, when I got to this point, what you're supposed to do is pick up for the the straps knit the i cord straps and then keep going with the back and then you'll join in the round and i was like you know what if i cast on provisionally with you know the yarn i'm still using and then knit the back from the bottom up and then i'll i mean i'll have to kitchener the i cords but then because i've kitchener the i cords if I'm not happy with the length of the straps, I can, they'll have, they'll be top bottom up so I can undo them. Right. That was my, my thinking because the way the straps were now, I would have to, I would have to take out the pickup 
and then re Kitchener in the front. And I'm not really good at Kitchener. Linen is not very forgiving and it does stretch in a way that I don't necessarily understand yet. The last yarn I'd used was a cotton linen blend and I, it was for a friend, so I don't own the garment. So I thought that if I did the, you know, the straps bottom up, I would be able to undo the Kitchener and shorten things. It would still be in the front. Oh no, I was gonna pick up and then join together in the back, right? That was the way I was gonna do it. But then I, because it was bottom up, so I, I had options. Right, And also, I wanted to have it decreases because the way that the original pattern goes, she has, it, do you have, has you increasing like it's a scarf, so there's a big amount of fabric growing from the middle, which I find to be, I mean, I guess it's very, it's very pretty if you have no breasts whatsoever and don't mind a lot of fabric flapping around in the back because then it gives you a sort of a capey, drapey kind of a situation. That is not the look I'm going for. I go for a little more streamlined. So I knew that I wanted to, I wanted to do all the decreasing on the sides so it would match the front where I'm increasing right along an edge. And I wanted to match that in the back. And because I was too lazy to do the math, which it's not hard math. I really should just do the math. But if, if you if you are decreasing, you don't have to worry about math. You just have to decide. Oh wait, hang on. I maybe you should start going faster, right? If you get to a certain point and you know approximately how long, I don't want it to be this long. So I knew I'd have to increase the rate. So it was a very clever idea. The problem was what was the problem? Why did I? Why did it not work? Oh, I forgot. Why did it not work? Hang on, I'll cut this part out. I gotta think. Oh, you know what it was? I know why it didn't work. Because I misjudged the armhole depth, so I ended up with a much deeper armhole depth than I wanted, and I couldn't adjust that by making the straps shorter. I had to have made the back shorter. That's why it didn't work. So it was a very clever idea that did not go well. It happens. I'm not that worried about it. Upside was that I was able to then measure how long I wanted the straps, which is actually very convenient. So this is the yarn that I used for the strap. <laughs> and as, as long as my row gauge doesn't change tremendously much, this is all I need to keep going. Um, and then of course, this was the strap and the back on the other side. So, I, I, and I measured. I did, I did remember to measure so I know also how long I want it to be and hopefully it works out a second time. Because this yarn is so pretty. I don't know if the multicoloredness of this is gonna come out on camera. It is so, so gorgeous. It's got sort of steel blues and grays and then an almost copper kind of a color going on, and therefore a little hue of purple. It's concept by Katia L L Link Linksis. I, I don't know how you pronounce that. It's that. And this is what it looks like in the skein. Which, this was another super score. I was in another yarn, which is a yarn store up in Burlington, Massachusetts. I was passing through, I stopped in, I happened to catch a sale. And this, I, I think I got all of this for $15. So a really nice 100% linen. There are so many strands in here, which makes it awkward to knit with. This is a, a slightly challenging yarn to use. You're probably, how do, how do I? Let's do that. So you can see that it is, you can see the strands and therefore it's reasonably easy to catch a strand if you are like don't use even though you, you might want to use bamboo oh that's a broken strand oh that's irritating that's all right i'll pull it through to the back but that's irritating um i don't i won't care because holy crap is it pretty i really won't care but it is linen is already kind of annoying to use this linen is slightly more annoying although i did find it not as hard on my hands as some other linens i've used so you win some you lose some 
I'm excited for this tank top. I don't really enjoy knitting with linen, but I really love wearing linen. So the the minor discomfort, the the, the less than perfectness of the process is worth it to me in the end for a garment that it, they're, they're super drapey. It's, I mean, and this is at, this is at a particularly dense gauge for this yarn because of the fact that it's, you know, you, it's that balance with linen, right? You don't want it too see-through, but you also don't want it too dense. Although you can go like ridiculously dense on linen and it doesn't go armory like wool does. So it's really a question of how comfortable you are with knitting at that tight of a gauge. But I tend to go as tight as I'm comfortable, even if that's not remotely the recommended needles. Although I don't think I'm far off. I think I was using fives on this and this says fives or sixes. So should be, it's, it's not that far off. I don't know, I have no idea what my gauge is because again, this is from last year and I'm now just picking up the project again and I have to remember everything and hope that I can find my book with my notes because I think I brought it, but I don't know where it is. So hopefully we'll get lucky and I will soon have a seriously, like ridiculously gorgeous linen tank top. I can't even believe this color. I also wonder, because I don't remember the last one, this one is curling more. But I suppose when it's, when it's got the straps, it'll pull that a little more taut. And it shouldn't do that as much, I hope. I hope. It'd be really annoying to do that all and then find out it's whatever. There is another tank top that I contemplated, and now that I'm sitting here thinking about it, I'm wondering if I shouldn't do that instead. Because I like a T-neck tank top. I like something that comes in very close to my neck, because shoulders are a good thing to expose as you are no longer 25 years old. Your shoulders tend to stay pretty nice. Don't know why that is. It just is. So maybe because we use them all the time. I don't know. Um, but I have, I have sun damage because I was a, just a silly teenager and you, that, that comes back to bite you later. So don't be a silly teenager, by the way, if you happen to be, you know, a teenager and watching this, don't, don't tan, don't, don't do it. You'll regret it. You will definitely regret it later in life. So even when I'm wearing tank tops, this is an, I want to cover as much of my chest as possible. Cause I'm really, I mean, I use sunscreen, but I want to minimize and reverse if possible the <laughs> the sun damage that I got from when I was younger. And so I like one that has coverage sort of here. And I don't care about the back. The back is fine as long as I'm, you know, higher underneath the arms so that I'm not shoving the girls at anybody. I don't need to be doing that. And there's another tank top, the name of which I'm forgetting, but I'll put on screen again, that I'm finding tempting. There, now that I'm at this particular stage, I am wondering, should I not just rip the last of this out. That's a thought. That's a thought worth having. Um, I am very light on yardage. I only got, it must have been four skeins. So I am a little light on yardage and I am going a little tight on gauge. So that'll be, that's something I'll have to look at, but it's a thought. If you have any tank tops that meet my criteria that I have that's not the one on the screen and that's not the Velona, feel free to let me know in the comments. I am always open to suggestions. Pardon the audio in the dishwasher, but oh, I'm so psyched about this fabric. Look at this fabric. I'm gonna really, really, really like these socks. And that's all I got. Thanks for watching. See you next time.